Um, so welcome everyone to the um, GAR Tangible Earth event here in the um, Global Platform. I'm just going to speak just for a few minutes because I'm not ready for show tonight. It's um, Shinichi Takimura. But roughly two years ago when we presented the GAR 11 in Tokyo, um, we first came across the Tangible Earth which was also being presented in the same place. And we immediately saw a fantastic potential as a tool to actually be able to communicate our risk information in a different way. Um, if we're trying to actually make disaster risk management be done in a different way, we need to find different ways to also communicate the information we have, ways which change people's perspective um, on our planet, on risk, and on what we're, what's actually going on. So. Over the last year, um, we've worked very closely with the Earth Literacy Program in Japan. Um, Shinich Prof Professor Shinichi Takimura, um, David, and the other members of the team on a range of products. One is what we're going to demonstrate tonight, which is the tangible earth itself. But also, um, they've also been responsible for the graphic production of Agar the augmented reality of Agar. You've all been seen, there's actually icons in there which come to life, as well as importantly, the GFT, the Gar for Tangible Earth or Gar for Tablet, which basically has all the same information on a tablet or smartphone version. You can download it um, from the Gar website. So without any further ado, all of us in UNISDR and in my team are uh, extremely, I mean, impressed with the dedication of ELP and their team. I'm very, very grateful for everything they've managed to do because I think we have now a fantastic cutting edge product. So with that, I'll hand over to Shinichi who will take us through the Tangible Earth for God. Thank you. Is this the way I put the uh, microphone? Is this okay? Do you hear me? Okay, thank you. Um, before starting my presentation, uh, this place is getting hot due to the uh, anthropogenic global warming, so uh, please feel free to take off your jacket. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, my name is Takemura, representing Earth Literacy Program. As introduced, we have served as a communication uh, consultancy for UNISDR and GAR 13. And we have uh, been in charge of the uh, concept design and the uh, visual design of the uh, GAR, printed GAR, including the uh, inverted A logo and the inverted uh, uh, umbrella symbols. And also we have proposed and created GAR for tablet. Uh, maybe you have down. Some of you have downloaded already and enjoying. But the, uh, actually, this tablet version GAR is conceived as the uh, tangible earth in your hand on your tablet. So uh, let me first introduce uh, the tangible earth. What tangible earth is all about, and uh, talk about some new dimension of the. Uh, disaster risk communication in a global perspective. Now, this is the world's first interactive digital globe, interactive in the sense that you can spin it with your hands in any direction you want to spin. And also, uh, you can scan and search the, uh, some local, specific, local information in a specific area. And now I'm showing you the uh, Earth surface image uh, sh shot through the uh, space shuttle. And uh, the important aspect of this globe is that the uh, it's a real-time globe. It represents the real-time <coughs> present situation of the globe. So for example, you can see daylight terminator is real-time. So you can see that the veil of the night is approaching to Geneva, and on the other side of the globe, the people in Hawaii is greeting sunrise. And the cloud data is also updated hourly, every one hour, so uh, through the internet from the satellites. So um, now it's showing you the uh, animation of the uh, cloud movement over the last four days. And when the animation stops, it represents a 
real-time cloud distribution. So uh, this is a globe represented. Um, this is the uh, real-time globe seen from space at this very moment. And uh, you can overlay various data like serpentine, ocean currents, and you can overlay, if you overlay the longitude and latitude line, you can see the, uh, the important huge heat conveyor belt, uh, which is uh, conveying the uh, vast amount of heat to North Europe to s stabilize the climate in Europe. And also, uh, it can be shown in background music. <laughs> It's a sea surface temperature, and if you show the uh, some sea surface temperature anomaly, you can see the El Nino phenomenon, Enzo oscillation. Uh, I will show you some typical El Nino phenomenon, like warm seawater. It's concentrated at the uh, eastern part of the uh, Peru, and the, uh, it causes the abnormal weather all around the world. Uh, I will go back to this point later, but the, uh, as you see, uh, you can overlay any kind of data, uh, and you'll find the um, hidden aspect of the uh, our globe uh, by overlaying and in, in synthesizing various scientific data. For example, now I'm showing you, be careful, <laughs> the uh, migratory birth traces. The, uh, this is called Arctic Turns, which is migrating from Arctic Circle to from Greenland, all the way from Greenland to Antarctic. Such an am amazing bird. But if you overlay some other data like the plankton blooming, you can see the, uh, you, you will find the uh, hidden aspect. This bird is passing by the uh, cold water upwelling area, uh, which implies the abundance of the uh, biosphere, uh, plankton blooming. And when they reach Antarctic, uh, the uh, plankton is blooming like this. So uh, we are maybe the first generation in the human history uh, to start recognizing our planet, me mechanism of our planet in the, such a comprehensive way and uh, using the real-time data. So uh, and also, so thus we call this globe as globe synthesizer, Earth synthesizer. Uh, it's a platform to integrate and synthesize various scientific data to <coughs> understand our planet comprehensively. So uh, now that we start collaborating with UNICDR, why don't we <coughs> put lots of data about the uh, disaster risks and the uh, climate change, etc., and start exploring about the, uh, the new way of the visualizing the uh, global disaster risks. So now, let's move on to the uh, new way of the uh, global <coughs> risk communication. Now, let me show you first some um, exemplification of the uh, disaster data. It's a cyclone tracks of the uh, 90, <laughs> 2009. It's, anim it's a shown in the anima animated way. And now I'm showing you Superstorm Sandy, which hit New York last year. And last week, we could see the cyclone Mahasen, as you remember. And this is a replay of the uh, animation of the cyclone Mahasen approaching the Bangladesh. But the point here is that it could be seen in real time. I noticed this cyclone 
not by listening to the BBC news or something after the, uh, it hit Bangladesh, but I noticed the huge cyclone was being born in, in the Indian Ocean uh, at least a week before its landfall, or even before it's named as Mahasen. So, and this is very important, not only for the uh, forecast and the uh, disaster mitigation, early warning uh, among the uh, countries which is to be hit, but also for the uh, global security, the disaster risk management of the global society, because nowadays such an intensive hazard <coughs> is no longer a local phenomenon. I show you the example of Thailand flood. These sequential cyclone caused the uh, major flooding in Thailand. Of course, the, uh, it is not the only reason of the flooding, but the, uh, <coughs> at least we could see <coughs> such a huge cyclone and it could be seen in real time, but the uh, point here is that the, uh, the impact ripples throughout the world. And the, uh, actually, the Japanese company were so much affected by the uh, uh, Thailand flood, as you know. So uh, your company might be affected by the disaster on the other side of the globe. This is the new, new perspective. Uh, of a uh, contemporary disaster risk. Um, we, need the, we always need a global perspective to think about the uh, local disaster. And it was shown also in the uh, Great East Japan earthquake and tsunami. I'm showing you the uh, March 11th event here. Um, the yellow point represents the uh, earth seismic events, but the, uh, as you see, here is the uh, exceptionally huge magnitude of the earthquake happening around March 11th. And it caused the uh, huge tsunami. And, and uh, it's showing now, it's showing the uh, devastated areas. But the, uh, again here, the tsunami rippled not only physically, but also economically through the global supply chain, as is described in GAR. Toyota lost 1.2 billion and the, uh, uh, reduced the production of the automobiles, uh, not only in Japan, but also in the United States, and the uh, reduction was 70% 70, 70 in India, 50% in China. So nowadays, disaster is no longer a local phenomenon. And we always need the global perspective to understand, uh, to be prepared for the uh, disaster. And it can be said also for the extensive local disaster. For example, this, is, this graph dramatically illustrates the uh, correlation between the uh, Colombian flood extensive disaster and the uh, global scale Enzo, El Nino, Southern Oscillation <coughs> pattern. So uh, in order to understand the local minor disaster, we need a global perspective. <coughs> Thus, we live in such an age that the, uh, the global perspective is the must for every leaders, political leaders, uh, business leaders, and even for the uh, lay citizens. And another lesson here from this graph is that if you look at the phenomenon in this time scale, you will see the recurrent pros, uh, pattern of the uh, a disaster. And so you could have anticipated the disaster to some extent. And actually, the El Nino phenomenon, El Nino Southern Oscillation is to some extent predicted by simulation nowadays. Um, the point here is that many people say that the uh, hazard and disaster is unprecedented or unpredictable. But in fact, there is no disaster which is 
really unpredictable or un, um, unprecedented. And even the uh, tsunami on uh, March 11 could have been anticipated more effectively. And that's a lesson among the uh, all Japanese, maybe. The, every 30 years, the uh, Tohoku area was hit by the uh, severe tsunami. Uh, now, most of the Japanese are keen to uh, aware of the facts. And the, uh, every 100 or 150 years, the uh, Pacific coast was hit by the uh, tsunami. So we are really expecting the next uh, huge tsunami, uh, which will devastate the Tokyo, Nagoya, Osaka, uh, most of the cities. So um, if we broaden our the bandwidth of our imagination and perspective to s look at the world, then we know that, that there is no unprecedented or unpredictable disaster. Um, this is a basic concept to cope with the uh, contemporary disasters. And uh, here is a global pattern of the uh, seismic events. Uh, you can see now I'm showing you the uh, seismic data over the last 20 years, and you can see the tectonic plate borderlines. You can see how vulnerable Japan is. The, uh, it's uh, on the borderline of the four tectonic plates. It's a cross-section of the four tectonic plates. And you can see Indonesia is also vulnerable, and compared to Japan, in China is uh, rather relatively free from the uh, seismic events, but the, uh, you can see the concentration in Sichuan area. And if you understand why the uh, earthquake is concentrated here, we can demo demonstrate this kind of the uh, paleographic map. Uh, it's showing you the uh, continental drift. And if we overlay the seismic data, and if we go back about 10 million years, 20 million years, like this. Well, you can see the Indian subcontinent was quite uh, away from the uh, Eurasian continent, but now it's beginning to collide with the Eurasian continent. And now you can see, due to the collision, why the uh, earthquake events is concentrated here. So uh, this is one of the uh, examples. Uh, if we <coughs> broaden uh, the bandwidth of our uh, uh, perception and tempor temporarily and yeah, spatially, uh, we can understand more the uh, risk pattern of our globe uh, more effectively. But another point is that disaster risk is not defined only by the geographical and geological conditions, of course. The uh, disaster risk is a function of the hazard, exposure, and vulnerability. So we need to think about, consider about the human aspect. And now I'm showing you some human aspect here. It's now showing the uh, rapid urbanization. The mega city is, <coughs> in a way, proliferating, uh, increasing. Um, mega cities oh. and you can see the uh, unique pattern that mega city is proliferating on the coast mainly because of the uh, increase of the uh, importance of uh, global trade it's showing you the uh, movement of the ships so the uh, port city has increased its importance in the, uh, due to the global interdependence. And uh, so major city, the exposure in the uh, low elevation coastal zone has increased in a very rapid. So uh, if I show you the sea level rise impact, for example, you can see the red represents the uh, very vulnerable area 
for the sea level rise and the floodings and other uh, water-related disasters because they, these areas are below uh, 10 meters. So uh, by 10 meter sea level rise, these areas will be affected much. And in China, for example, near Qingdao and Shanghai, in this vulnerable zone, more than 150 th uh, million people are exposed here. So um, the impact of sea level rise will be... Uh, and also in Tokyo, Tokyo Eastern area is re really vulnerable, uh, mainly the uh, below sea level. And the 50% uh, of its population and 70% of uh, its asset is concentrated in the uh, low elevation coastal zone in Japan. So that makes the, uh, our society really vulnerable. <coughs> so if we look at the uh, trends of the global warming, now I'm showing you the uh, CO2 concentration, seasonal variation in the global um, and the variation during the uh, last decades. Um, and also, uh, I'm showing you the wildfires. Uh, wildfires and the loss of natural capital is one of the uh, uh, important topic in GAR 13. Uh, the, uh, this is also the, uh, one of the main cause of the uh, CO2 concentration increase. <coughs> and so now, Our sea ice, uh, polar sea ice is diminishing in, in a drastic way. This is based on the uh, real-time data, the real-time feed of the ice melt. Well, this globe has a real-time data, uh, not only about the weather and the uh, cloud distribution, but also the uh, seismic data and the uh, Arctic sea ice. So. Uh, the symptom of the uh, global warming is already very visible. Now I'm showing you the uh, global warming simulation based on the uh, rather conservative scenario, emission scenario of IPCC called A1B. And you can see the, uh, this is uh, one of the uh, simulated scenario of our future. Uh, you can see the, uh, these Arctic areas and the Himalayas are especially vulnerable to the global warming because the, uh, it has an albedo by ice and snow. And when they lose the uh, albedo, the uh, global warming progression will be much accelerated. And you can see the uh, diminishing glacier in Himalayas. And it means the uh, diminishing water resource for the major rivers Yangtze River, Yellow Rivers, Mekong, Ganges, India, and the, uh, more than 2 billion, uh, 2.5 billion are dependent on the, the water resources here. So if we zoom in on the Yellow River, River Mouse, it used to be like this, but the, uh, recently in these uh, 15 or 20 years, it's in drying up. So uh, thus, the, uh, our uh, crisis in terms of the uh, um, water scarcity is such already visible in this way, but the, uh, not many people, even in, in uh, Japanese or Chinese, are not so keen to the, these risks. So global, as GAR 13 described, the global warming is the uh, one of the typical pattern of the uh, global. Uh, risk transfer, ultimate pattern of global risk transfer. And I show you another example of the uh, global risk transfer. This is the uh, transporter transmission uh, <coughs> circulation of the air pollutants. Blue represent the uh, sulfur dioxide, green nitrogen dioxides, and yellow carbon oxide. These are emitted from the cars and factories, and but the, uh, it circulates all over the world. So even children can see how we are connected to each other, how we are sharing one globe. And if you look at the southern hemisphere, 
well, it's clean. There's no emission, it seems to be. But actually, if we overlay some other data, it shows the ozone hole due to the uh, emission of the fronts uh, from the northern hemisphere. So my point is that we are living in such a, an age that we can visualize the dynamism of our planet, including the uh, hazardous events and also the human impacts. So why not we disseminate and put these kind of the uh, global pla uh, visualization platform in every school, in, ev in the, in the uh, every leader's um, working room and every presidential house. We need to uh, collaborate each other and share the uh, same vision of what is really happening on our planet. Um, so, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, it's a pity that 21st century leaders and children still learning geography and geology and global warming using a two-dimensional map invented in 16th century. And so uh, now is the time to shift our uh, information environment. And now we have recreated this system on the uh, tablet version. I have run out of the time, so uh, just briefly, uh, you can download on your iPad. Uh, iPad 4 is re uh, recommended, and iPad 3 is so-so. And the uh, tablet version <laughs> will be ready by mid-June, hopefully. <laughs> Android, so-so, tablet Android version. and. It's also the uh, interactive globe. You can zoom in like this or spin, or uh, you, you can represent the uh, real-time cloud or the uh, cyclones or wind. Yeah, it's too small, yeah. Anyway, you can check, and you can check the uh, risk maps from the GAR 13 or some good, good practice lists. Now, um, maybe I don't have time to show the how it works as an augment reality uh, system, but if you um, touch the AR button and look at the, some icons on the uh, printed GAR, you will see, yeah, here's the uh, uh, article about the U.S. drought. And if we approach just like Harry Potter's newspaper, it will, it starts moving in this way. Or other icons, uh, we have the uh, interviews of the researchers so that we can understand more about the background and their motivation for their research. So uh, it's an augmented reality, but the, uh, what is important is not the technology. What is important is our vision for the future and the, uh, how we perceive our own planet. So I hope you take full advantage of this unique tool to communicate with your peers and to call attention to the disaster reduction uh, risks uh, among your corporate members or stakeholders, especially shareholders, and also to communicate with your own planet. Thank you very much. Thank you.